For the past 20 years, we have lived through a coding revolution, a gold rush of double digit job growth, cushy work life balance, and six figure salaries straight out of college. But this could all be coming to an end very, very soon. Coding is being pushed as this amazing skill that can change your life really fast, but there are certain things that you're simply not being told by the tech YouTubers, such as myself. So that is why I wanted to make this video. I wanted to come clean about some of the things that so far I simply have have not been telling you about learning to code. But then I thought to myself that, no, that, that's not enough. I'm just one coding YouTuber. And if there are things that I have been hiding from you, what do all these other coding YouTubers have to tell you that they have not been telling you so far? So I invited two of my tech YouTube friends, JJ Goodison and Tech with Tim, all the way from North America here to Dubai to discuss the harsh realities of learning to code and all the things that we have been hiding from you up until this point. And towards the end of this video, we're also all gonna be sharing our views on what is actually happening with programming, with AI and ChatGPT, and is learning to code actually still worth it in 2023? Hey guys, this is Tim from the Tech with Tim channel. Thanks to Intermate. Wait, what's your channel name again? Internet Made Coder? <laughs> hey guys, this is Tim from the Tech with Tim YouTube channel. The first truth I'm gonna share with you about learning coding and just coding in general is imposter syndrome. Now, a lot of people when they're learning how to code will constantly compare themselves to people like me or Internet Made Coder or even Jason who have been doing this for tons of years. And they'll constantly kind of have this depression or feeling like they're not good enough. And that's definitely something you need to learn to deal with as you're kind of getting into the coding field. I know for myself, when I was younger, 14, 15 years old, starting to get a bit better at programming, I constantly felt like I didn't stack up. I wasn't gonna be able to get a job. I wasn't just good enough compared to all of the other programmers that I know. So it's really a big confidence thing that you need to learn. And really the only way to get through that is just keep programming, working on projects and understanding that everyone has a different journey and it takes a different amount of time to get to, uh, you know, the place that everyone's at in their coding career. Yet another truth about learning to code is that you want to pick the right way of learning. And to do that, I actually have a course. It's called Python Developer Masterclass. It will teach you Python. It will teach you how to build projects and also most importantly, how to actually get hired with some of the secrets that I have been applying myself for five plus years to help people with their resumes and get really great jobs and really big companies. So if you want to check that out, there's going to be a link down below. If not, no hard feelings, but the offer is there and I'm actually running a discount right now. So if you want to get in, now is your time. Hi, my name is Jason Goodison and I have the better channel. <laughs> I want to tell you a story. When I was 12 years old, I had a paper out and I worked odd jobs all throughout my life. The reason I got into coding was just to have money and take care of my family. I think a lot of people listening are probably in the same situation. The harsh reality that people say you have to care about what you're working on, the harsh reality is that's true. I used to think that's just something rich people would say because they don't have to worry about this stuff. They don't have to worry about where the rubber meets the road. But as it turns out, you actually do have to care about this. So over time, as you get better at this and you start achieving your goals, you're gonna find that there's this like Maslow's hierarchy of needs and you're gonna start feeling like an emptiness if you're not working on something that you actually care about and that you're actually passionate about. So when I got into coding myself, I instantly basically just fell in love with it. To me, coding was this holy grail of this amazing career that I knew instantly that this was the thing that I wanted to do. And I assumed that it would be the same for everyone. So I started telling all of my friends, I was like, guys, you have to learn to code. Don't become a banker, become a software engineer instead. And as I spoke to more and more of my friends, I realized that harsh reality about programming is that it's not necessarily the right fit for everyone. For example, one of my friends who I was speaking to about coding had actually tried it and they had not enjoyed it at all because the reality of programming is that the job can be very lonely. So if you're not independent, if you don't enjoy that kind of work, programming might not be for you. I myself am extremely guilty of this, but when you're getting into programming and you're kind of diving head first and you're really grinding, it's very addictive to just be in front of your computer coding 24 seven. However, that can really take a toll on your health, your mental health, and you really need to be intentional about getting out there, going for a walk, working out. I know I myself recently have really been trying to actually get outside of the house, get some sunlight, work out, go to the gym. And I know that seems like a simple thing, but when you're in this programming and tech field, it feels like you constantly need to be learning something. You constantly need to be in front of the computer. And you really just need to be careful about that because it is pretty detrimental if you do this for a long period of time. The next harsh reality is that most of the job isn't actually writing code. When I was at Microsoft, 
there were entire months at a time where I didn't write any code. As you become more senior, you actually delegate the writing of code to more junior people. So as it turns out, writing the code is easy, but determining what code to write and in what priority actually becomes the more difficult part. Okay, so all of these things that we have been sharing are things that you should absolutely consider before you learn how to code. But I'm sure that the real thing that you're thinking is that even if coding is for you, is it really worth it to learn in 2023? So I wanted to take this question and put it to my friends and ask them point blank, will AI replace programmers or should we all still be learning the code? Sorry guys, I was just sleeping in because ChatGPT took my job, so not really any work to do today. Now in all seriousness, I don't think ChatGPT is gonna replace all programming jobs, but it's definitely gonna change the way in which we program. Just like everything in the past, ChatGPT really is a tool. In this case, it's a very powerful tool. And I think that what it's really doing is expanding the skill gap between your junior and senior developers. Personally, I use ChatGPT kind of like a low paid intern where I'm delegating it a ton of tasks that typically I would give a lower level programmer. So I think for most of you, you really need to be focused on improving your skill and getting to a point where you're the one who's gonna be able to use ChatGPT, not be replaced by ChatGPT. Back in the day, people used to write assembly code and they'd have to write a lot of it. So you can imagine with the invention of C and subsequently even more abstractions like JavaScript and Java, people probably thought all assembly programmers were gonna be replaced and they were but they were replaced with something better. We now have lighter weight technology we can use to write more code and iterate quicker. And uh, the whole landscape of software engineering has changed quite drastically, but it hasn't disappeared. It's only gotten bigger. So no matter what AI can write or can't write, there's always gonna need to be a person involved that knows how to prompt the machines, that knows how to debug the systems that ChatGPT writes and debug the systems that Tim writes. <laughs> So the truth about coding is that yes, it is absolutely still worth learning in 2023. In fact, I think it is more valuable than ever. But the reality is also that actually getting hired as a self-taught programmer is not easy, but it is very, very possible. It just requires a slightly different strategy and it requires you to know how to position yourself to employers. I've managed to get hired as a self-taught programmer and I've helped so many people do it as well. So I know that you can do it too. And in fact, I put everything I know about, not only about learning the code, but actually how to use these skills to get hired into my course, Python Developer Masterclass. And I've actually just released the biggest update yet to the course on how to become a pro web developer. But most importantly, I teach you everything I've learned from like four years of helping people getting jobs in different industries and everything I've learned about my own programming career to actually use these skills to get a real job as a developer because it's so possible to do it as a self-taught developer because I'm putting so much energy into this course every single day, the price is continually increasing and the next price increase is happening in just three days. So if you still wanna get in and you wanna get all of this at the current price, now is your last chance. And I also thought I'd give you, my viewer, a further deal to celebrate this new release. So if you use the code IMWeb, you can actually get a further 15% off the current price. The discount code is also going to be expiring very, very soon. So if you wanna get in, now would be the time. And beyond this, the thing that really separates the people who successfully learn to code and get hired and those who fail is that the people who succeed continuously try to not only learn from their mistakes, but also other people's mistakes on specifically how can they learn as effectively and as quickly as possible. Because sadly, these things are just not taught at schools. And I actually made this video right here where I talk about how just changing three things about my own process of learning to code literally transformed everything and it allowed me to learn the code so much faster. So if you're serious, go watch this video and think about how you can apply these things yourself.